ओम मकुंद अपार गुढ़ा सिंधु शांतरूपिण श्रीचंद्रशेखर गुरु प्रणभाजायेखर ओम परमात्मने नमः आत्मेवाष्ठे श्लोक The person is talked about. The person is the jata. So the condition of the person who has this knowledge. Eda tada, eda chittam, viniyatam chittam, atpani eva vatishtate. Viniyatam is resolves. Resolve means withdraw. The mind withdraws from the external vishaya. It's called uparati. It is uparati, but here it is. It's a cross as Lady Di Asanam, the seat of meditation, withdraws. Withdraws this focus from the external things and atma niyeva avatishtate. Then it becomes absorbed in atma. Avatishtate stada to vitava. It becomes atma nipa. Avatishtate. Tada nisprga ha avat. श्लोकाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाजयाज
it is no more an object of desire. Therefore, he is free from longing for the objects. It is itself is not there. Therefore, this praha. Therefore, where is the longing? Therefore, this prugaha, spruga nasti. Spruga, the icha will be there for the objects. Therefore, he is free from desires. Sarva kama is kama referring to objects. Free from longing for any, any objects. That person said to be uttaha. Viniyata. Vi purvaka, vi ni purvaka, yam, ta purtaya. Viniyata means ekagrata ityartaha. Chitta ekagriyam is completely focused. Absorb. The word viniyata, resolution. The word viniyata is defined by Shankar Bhagavad Pada here as ekagrata. One point in us, focus. Focus of the mind on the Jaya Vishaya, on the object of meditation. In the seat of meditation, it is Atma. So, absorb in Atma, Atman, Yeva, Vatishtate. Meaning that the mind, the chitta of the person, Viniyatam, has a capacity to remain single pointedly in the object of contemplation. Because in the Asana here, therefore, the object of contemplation is the words of the Shastram. Regarding Atma. So, on the object of contemplation alone, without getting distracted, that is Viniyatam, completely resolves, absorbed in the object of, on the object of contemplation. In such a mind, what happens is both the object of contemplation and the meditator, that is the contemplator, become one and the same, there being no separation whatsoever between the two, the Jyata and the Jaya. Because the meditator is absorbed in Dhyaya, therefore there is, there are no two, there is only one. The mind is occupied with Dhyaya, therefore only the object of meditation is. The mind has gained a certain mastery, no, a certain contemplative disposition, a composure by itself, in itself through the disciplines that have already been mentioned as qualifications for gaining such a mind. For gaining such a mind, only those qualifications are there. So, therefore, it is all the qualification, the mind, preparation of the mind, sadhana, chatushtaya, sampati, qualifications for getting such a, such a mind. The disciplines one has to follow, whether it is antar, Bhagiranga or Antaranga, the disciplines that have been mentioned as qualifications for getting such a mind. The one who has such a mind is called Adhikari. So, Adhikari is being Adhikari, therefore, absorbed in the object of thought, the object of meditation. And this mind is abides in Atma alone. The Samskrita, the mind, the mind which is Samskrita, will discipline, absorbed in Atma. Tasmin Atman Yeva Vatishtate, which means there is no separation between mind and Atma. There is complete absorption of at mind uh, uh, one Atma. Therefore, there is no mind in Atma, there is only Atma. There is only the Object of contemplation, which is Atma. The meditator is dissolved temporarily, and the meditator and the, and the object of meditation becomes one with the object of meditation. Thus, for the person discussed here, there is no Atma to be contemplated upon because both the contemplator and the contemplated are Atma. The contemplator, Jyata, is Atma, and the object of meditation is Atma. So, when mind is absorbed, what happened to the Jyata? He is a doer of meditation to start with. Oh, when the mind absorbed in Atma, there is only Atma. Previously, there was as though contemplation. That's why we say as though contemplation. It is not, it is because it's always as though. Previously, there was as though contemplation, whereas now there is no necessity for as though because the self remains the self alone. That's a limitation of the language. Atma is as Atma alone. Atma with Atma as Atma. Atma is as Atma means Atma is Atma alone. Because it is not so in other states, whereas in the seat of meditation it is so, therefore Atma remains in Atma, in the self alone. This expression is common. Atmani eva Atmana Tushtaha. Atmani eva Atmana Tushtaha. Atmani eva Atmana Atma Atmani eva Avatishtate. All these expressions are very common. So, Therefore, contemplation is being done on oneself. Therefore, it is as though contemplation. There is no real contemplation. Because you are the one who is to be contemplated upon. 
you cannot sit upon yourself how can you contemplate upon yourself therefore we say as though contemplation and therefore the mind the the, the, the atma is the mind is resolved therefore atma remains in atma mind is there atma is there therefore as though contemplation the mind is not there but because the mind is resolved therefore atma alone is therefore atma in atma alone at atmani eva avatishtate atma atma atmani avatishtate there is no dhyata so dhyata is atma and the object of meditation is atma atmani so atma atmani avatishtate therefore atma remains as atma self remains as the self alone this is only atma the veda the veda is it's not there then what is very where is meditation that also not there all the three tripti meditator meditator and the meditation resolves when it is completely observed then it is called the, there is no vikalpa it is called nirvikalpa samadhi complete absorption again that nirvikalpa samadhi anubhava is not a prerequisite for moksha that is a state where the mind is completely absorbed therefore this samadhi whereas in ashtanga yoga the samadhi is the greatest is through which the person gains moksha but here it is not whether samadhi experience anubhava is there or not jnanam alone is a means for moksha whether you go to samadhi and gain nishta jnanam and get moksha or while awake we are nishta in atma and become free so you become you become free to become you are you are free you are liberated so samadhi is not a prerequisite samadhi means absorption of the mind when we talk about the person who is who sits for contemplation contemplating an atma mind is absorbed that is samadhi we say but when shavana matrena when shavana itself jnana happens then the person is adhikari he gets jnana and becomes free so there is no need for samadhi This is another confusion. Then we call for samadhi. One has to gain and then one becomes free. It is not so. So, the Ashtanga Yoga is called for samadhi. It is different. There it is. They say it is samadhi. The samadhi is a person. They are according to whatever the concept of moksha. They become free. Then the mind. Here it is Nidhyasana. So, almost many of the things are common. But in the concept of in the whenever in the concept of in the concept of moksha we differ. Moksha is freedom that is only by knowledge. Even in samadhi, this knowledge, this knowledge is knowledge is a therefore moksha. So going into samadhi gaining moksha, or without going to samadhi moksha is moksha. So that matters. Yanam that matters. that because that is only means for gaining moksha not samadhi and the mind abides in knowledge and uh, because of the differences absorbed in samadhi therefore some people remain in samadhi wake up sometimes and then again go to samadhi and there are some people go to samadhi and remain in samadhi forever and some people uh, they can come to samadhi only when the help of others they cannot come back to the gavakara by themselves and some people they don't go to samadhi at all but they are gnanis so therefore in that in that there are gradations but in gnanam there is no gradation it is called sapta bhumika jiva in the yoga vasishta it is talked about seven stages brahma vitta brahma vari brahma vitta brahma with variya ha variya and varishta ha but it's all about only the the ananda what one experience in samadhi in terms of that the differences are there but in terms of gyan there is no difference the gyan is a gyan irrespective of whether he gained samadhi or not you know but that's why we say samadhi means absorption of the mind simple absorption of mind in the dhyaya vastu that is samadhi if it is if it is uh, the object of meditation is dhyanam then it is This is dhyasana. In this dhyasana, this knowledge becomes clear, free from obstacles. Therefore, after being absorbed, the object of samadhi, 
then uh, he enjoys jnanam before itself shavanam itself jnanam has taken place but it is with pratibandha obstacles now that obstacles viparyaya viparita bhavana error which is due to the the habits the samskaras all these have been removed in, in this the seat of meditation now he becomes jnanam becomes obstacle free therefore it looks as though he went to samadhi and therefore gained jnana but it is not this is a point to be a well understood otherwise this causes confusion okay coming back to the topic the mind abides in knowledge alone how does this come and how does this contemplator's mind abide in such chitananda atma how is it located there is it like two objects one sitting upon the other that is the expression atmani eva at atman atma atma atmani eva vatishtate self remains as self alone no the mind abides in atma purely in the form of knowledge clarity that's why it's assimilation nididhyasanam for assimilation nididhyasanam for clarity nididhyasanam for doubt free error free error free knowledge in other words the meaning of the word i is no more a matter for conjecture and mistaken notions for the person it is not something that one has to contemplate upon in order to understand it further this capacity of the mind to remain in atma the meaning of the expression atmani eva vatishtate here the mind remains in atma whether it is samadhi or whether it is vyavahara for gyani always refers in atma. it remains in atma in spite of vyavahara it remains in atma vyavahara cannot create any dent in its understanding he knows everything is anatma mitya therefore his understanding of atma cannot be shaken that is what is gained in the seat of meditation nididhyasana having given up all one concerns and anxiety is about the various things that are external to one self now the person is awake to atma he has woken up to the reality to yes understood woken up and understood the nature of himself the, the meaning of the truth of dhyata the meditator meaning the mind always remains or abides in atma therefore never separated from atma mind is atma but atma is not the mind therefore mind itself is mitya so therefore all the vrittis he knows it is mitya he knows all the vrittis are illumined by me sakshi chaitanya nakam satyam that is clear for this person for the one who has gained this clarity of knowledge about atma this this is freedom from longing for all the objects of this this prakaha therefore therefore is this prakaha natural it is this prakaha salvakamebhya before this he had to practice this now it has just become natural previously he had longing for objects of this earth because there was subject object division atma anatma and he has dega bimana now all these are gone where is kama and kama for what there is nothing other than atma the for this is natural this prakha is natural as a sadhana what he practice now we just this sadhya achieved this this is what freedom is therefore there is no purushartha for him after gaining moksha what purushartha is sir? the end is reached where is artha where is karma where is dharma where is moksha after the even shastra is itself is of no use shastra ceases to be a pramanam for him till then shastra is useful about the become muktaha this freedom is not something that must be gained separately but it's a natural condition of having gained the knowledge itself the result of knowledge is freedom from binding desires desires may be there for a gyani also but it will be non binding desires for samsari the desires are binding without which they cannot uh, without getting the object of desire they cannot survive they cannot live longing for them will be there they become a split person split personality whereas for a gyani the desires are no more binding therefore doesn't cause any dent if at all desires are there it is only for loka sangraha artham like in the case of shankaracharya and all so that is the result of knowledge gyani becomes free free means freedom he is freed from the bond bondage sense of emotional bondage because he is free from desires he doesn't have any desire here 
we have already seen that the word kama has got two meanings. Kama meaning desire and kama mean obje object of desire. Karmani vitpati, it can mean the objects also. Kama desire or it can mean objects also. Kamyate iti kama ha. What is desired is also called kama, object. And kama as such, it is desire. So both meanings are possible for kama. Now, the thought process wherein you want to gain an object is called kama. You know, san sankalpa kama is a sankalpa. In the, in the beginning, it is in the form of sankalpa. Later, it becomes a kama. That is the vritti, thought process in the mind. Wanting to gain an object is called kama. And that which you desire is also kama. So, at the vritti level, in the mind, is it is kama. And the object also is kama. Because the word kama is used throughout the Gita in this twofold sense. In the vritti level, the kama meaning at the vritti level as well as meaning the object. So, we have to see the context in which it is used to understand its meaning. Here it means objects of desire. Sarva kame vyaha nistrugaha. If it's free from the objects of desire. What are the objects of desire? They can be both seen, drishta, and seen, adrishta. Adrishta is sargaloka, etc. Drishta is what is seen. So, drishta is whatever you can accomplish now, when it's seen by you. Artha kama, you can see drishta. All these are drishta kama. It can be achieved here and now. Whereas, adrishta is something that is not seen by you, punya. For example, punyam. Punyam is in, is in cash in sargaloka. Or punyam can be in, in cash here itself. The form of conducive situations, all these are adrishta. Punya is desirable to you because it brings you something desirable later. Later, either in this life or later. Later means later in the next place, next life. So, in this way, punya is like currency. You cannot enjoy it. Enjoy it in and of itself, but it has a buying power. You can buy objects that you can enjoy. This punya, it can be an intermediary goal. That's why it's called dharma. Dharma Purushartha. Gaining Punya is itself is a Purushartha, Dharma Purushartha. Achieving which you are qualifying yourself, empowering yourself to accomplish various ends such as comfortable situations, wealth and power, etc. Or Sukha in the other Loka. Paraloka, Swarga Loka. So you get the power to you get the, uh, the you qualify yourself to get the desired ends, comfortable situations, wealth and power. Because these ends are not seen now, therefore they are called adrishta. Here this paragraph explains what is drishta and adrishta. So drishta pala, adrishta pala. So the objects of desire can be drishta or adrishta. Now, the word kama here, the kama then can be either for drishta, seen objects, or adrishta, which is the result of punya. The punya itself being adrishta. And punya when it is encashed in Sargaloka. Then Sargaloka is Adrishta. Punya is Adrishta, and the result of Punya is Sargaloka Prapti, that is also Adrishta. Or Punya, as because it is not seen and it can produce desire and sphere itself, then that is also Adrishta. Adrishta Palam. Adrishta Palamba, Adrishta Palamba. Adrishta meaning objects. Adrishta Palam is the results of the, results, the visible results. Adrishta Pala is invisible results. Whatever may be, whether it is Visible results or invisible results, or whether it is the, the desired objects which are drishtam or that which are not drishtam but it is desired. Meaning punya. Get punya, but punya you encash it. You encash the punya for the objects which you desire. So that you can buy it. So, therefore, suppose a man performs a particular fire ritual for the purpose of getting something here in the world. The ritual doesn't produce the object, but what it produces, itself produces, the, the ritual produces punya. And the punya causes, and punya produces, or punya causes situation to enjoy or to have objects. The ritual doesn't produce the object, since he wants out of the ritual, it's not the fire. Rather, by performing the ritual, he gains certain grace, of punya, it's against punyam, which removes all the obstacles in his effort to gain what he wants. That is called adrishta. Either the obstacles are removed or the objects of desire is he comes into he comes into comes to gain the object of desire. That is what is called adrishta. So naturally it means then there is a desire, kama for 
adrishta as so well as drishta so everyone has drishta everyone has desire for gaining the objects of desire which can be either drishta or adrishta now sarva kame byaha by saying the sarva the word is there. that means the person is free from drishta as well as adrishta that is why all this explanation sarva kame byaha nispraga sarva kame byaha from all objects of desire meaning it means drishta as well as adrishta drishta meaning contained artha and kama in this loka and dharma which is punya which is in, in cash incashable in the other loka so with regard to all the three artha kama dharma dharma artha kama sarva kame byaha sarva purusharthe byaha sarva parichinna purusharthe byaha for more limited purushartha limited ends is free it was not there therefore moksha is pragaha the definition of an accomplished person the person discussed here is free from belonging for all the objects of this earth both drishta and adrishta that is why sarva kame byaha sarva kame byaha from all the objects of this earth whether it is drishta or adrishta both are included in the word sarva is pragaha means be free from longing spraga means ichcha longing nis ni means miss means no free free from the longing for all the objects drishta or adrishta known and unknown visible and invisible has gone away from whom that person is called this praga therefore the person who is who is accomplished is called uttaha iti uchyate meaning that person's contemplation has become successful this praga it means vidyasanam as yielded its result vidyasana palam is not again new knowledge doesn't produce new knowledge but remember it is only removes the pratibandha that was successful it has become successful in removing the pratibandha calling someone accomplished means what how can being with oneself cause all the longings to go away how do you say that calling someone as accomplished person the reason one the reason one longs for objects is due to not knowing one self it is due to agyanam so when agyanam goes away the longing for objects also goes away this is everything as atma from other four sarvabhutastam atmanam sarvabhutani satmani yakshate yoga atma is going to come in this chapter so everything is atma where is where is uh, where are objects to desire for so he has a vision of atma therefore when everything is atma when everything is myself so therefore there cannot be any objects of this here there is no desire and therefore objects of this here then only we say the person is an accomplished person so when the self knowledge has been gained the mind absorbed in the self alone the person becomes tushtaha santushtaha fulfilled tuptaha the person is fulfilled and happy he has accomplished that to be accomplished after which nothing else is that to accomplish he has gained that is already gained gaining which there is nothing else to be gained there is no sense of lack there is no sense of want there is no sense of inadequacy all these were there before therefore they were longing for objects now it is it is not there the poor is happy this happiness cannot be improved upon because it's not happiness is not to vishayananda not to vishaya this the discovery of swarupa he or she knows that atma doesn't require any improvement for one security or perfection only when there is a sense of improve in sense of insecurity and when work for when works when work, when works for improving security then only the purushartha works in artha kama purushartha then only a sense of limitation comes and only that that only arises the desire for objects etc but here it is not atma is purnah aham atma therefore aham purnah therefore that since there is no lack in atma it means atma is purnah that atma is myself therefore the sense of lack is not there for the person when sense of lack is not there when sense of lack is not there then where, where is will where will be the where is the longing for the objects the nature of atma being purnah full the whole there is nothing to improve therefore the person has no longings whatsoever 
because atma is purnaha and the person is atma therefore he has no longing longing for at for objects will be there as long as one doesn't know one is purnaha and longing for objects will not be there once the person understands akam purnaha therefore all desires they stem they come from a sense of lack sense of lack it is notional it is not real if it is real then artha kama to be gained artha kama purushartha must be real it's all notional that's why knowledge whatever desires that may exist in a person's mind are simple desires and are fulfilled in fact the desires of such a person are privileges in that he or she has a mind that is privileged to desire a mind that has this great capacity to desire and therefore there is desire the desire of such a person is born of fullness not out of a sense of lack here you are talking about the desire arising in the mind of such a person non binding desires here this is out of fullness not not due to lack whereas for the ajnani one who doesn't have the knowledge of self that is a sense of want centered on i it is not that the mind is lacking in something or that anything else is lacking in anything for example when you say the body lacks the body the lack is centered on i which you, you identify with the body the body naturally has its limitations and in that sense it can be said to lack but the body lacks in this way is not a problem but that i that i lack is a problem born out of the non recognition of the swarupa the nature of i i lack is a problem body lacks is not a problem because of the avivana with the body therefore in the therefore the sense of lack i lack is a problem that is i lack i atma how can it be lacking because that i don't know the true nature of atma therefore i lack that is the condition of agnani here agnani is understand that as atma i don't lack anything therefore you can have desires the desires will not cause any trouble light like in, in the gita itself we are since second chapter apuryamana machala putishtam samudra mapa pravishanti yadvato as the ocean is full any amount of river water joining the ocean it will not make it full because it already full similarly all the objects of desire they go to the which are, which, are, which uh, enters the, the mind of such a person gyani they just resolve dissolves dissolves in them without creating any dent in the mind of the person whereas in the case of agyani it will it will cause serious disturbance disturbances therefore all desires stem from this sense of lack centered on i alone these are the desires that are binding in nature and therefore their fulfillment is a basis upon which i think i am going to discover some sense of security in myself some kind of satisfaction from myself this is why fulfilling one desires becomes one's main purpose in life that is purushartha purushartha for what icha icha siddhyartham it is it is for ishta praptyartham But sooner or later, you discover that desires have an act of breeding like rabbits, and you either give up or become a hobo or go crazy. The point here is, the desire born of one's lack are endless. If one is lacking any amount of the objects of desire, or the objects of desire, and if he gains two, one will be continued to be a lacking person. It is endless. And having discovered this fact, your inquiry begins. therefore we ask who am i am i really seeking something why am i seeking am i seeking something other than myself or am i seeking myself if i am seeking myself then it must be knowledge if we seeking something other than myself that cannot fulfill me so that seek i i will continue to be a seeker if i seek myself it means knowledge knowledge is knowledge of me is what i seek ultimately you have to come to the knowledge alone in fact i am seeking myself because the problem being that i have sense of lack centered on myself so therefore the sense of lack is a, it's a notional it's a notion therefore i want to be free from this type is all i want therefore 
I seek myself means I seek knowledge of myself. If I am a person whose nature is stuck with the sense of lack, then I can never get rid of it. But now and then I see myself free from this sense of lack. Whenever I open my eyes and see something so beautiful that I also open my mouth and say, ha, ah, I find myself free from any sense of lack. There is a heaven inside me. Whenever I laugh, it's all heaven because I have these two versions of myself, one with the sense of lack and one without it. A very valid doubt arises in me. I begin to think that perhaps I'm confused about myself. Perhaps my conclusions are wrong. This doubt marks the beginning of one's vichara, one's inquiry. Because this sense of sense of adequacy, sense of no lack also sometimes arises. Therefore, the inquiry starts. Sense of no limitation, sense of relative, like it's a shukti vasta. So because there is confusion with regard to oneself, and therefore the inquiry begins in order to understand, just in order to understand the truth and so that one can see that the conclusions are wrong and come to the right conclusion that as the Shastra reveals. So the whole samsara is nothing but due to wrong conclusions about oneself. Avichara it is. Avichara siddha. Without vichara, we conclude. Therefore, we suffer. That's why Shastra. Shastra means vichara. Shastra is vichara inquiry. Who am I cannot be inquired without Shastra. Without Shastra, who am I will you inquire? I, the nature of I, revealed only by Shastra. If Shastra doesn't say, you are Satchit Anandaha Atma, you are not the Shariram, Shariramana Sangata, etc. Then how do we know? How do we arrive at the nature of I? We cannot discover by just by meditating, who am I, who am I? Some used to say. Only by Shastra, only by Vichara, only by negation, not I, not I. Only by transcending cognitively all the Sharira or all the Koshas come to discover that Atma as such. The first Shastra Vichara. The person discussed in this shloka has come to know the self by means of such an inquiry, Vichara, accompanied by whatever disciplines that are necessary to prepare the mind so that knowledge could take place. That is Antaranga Sadhana, all the Bhagiranga Sadhana, Karma Yoga, Upasana, etc. All those things. Then followed by Antaranga Sadhana before contemplation. Then the mind of this person has no more doubts. It is free from doubts. So Mananam has done the job and totally awake with reference to Atma. Dhridhya Asana also has done the job. So he has got clarity, no error. Now there is no more guesswork or vagueness. Therefore, the person is naturally free from all longing and attachments. The next shloka, which is uh, an often quoted illustration, the one uses to describe the mind of such a person. We will see that in his class. Om Pur Namadav Pur Namidam Pur Nar Pur Namadachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadhaya Pur Nameva Vashishyate Om Sa Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyotam Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyotam